In September 1814, Major Zachary Taylor established Fort Johnson near modern Warsaw, Illinois, in order to guard the Mississippi River approaches to St. Louis. Completed in a matter of weeks, Fort Johnson was raised and abandoned in late October of the same year. Although briefly reoccupied the following year as Cantonment Davis as a staging site for the construction of nearby Fort Edwards, the actual location of the original site was quickly lost to history. Beginning in the early 1990s, a handful of local avocational historians and archaeologists made a concerted effort to relocate the site. Using a variety of contemporary documents, including this very early GLO map, and a contemporary sketch of the basic layout of the 1814 fort, possible locations for the site were narrowed down. In 2009, ISAS volunteers assumed the overall direction of the project, providing expertise and support necessary for ground truthing the archival research effort. Focusing on an expanse of mowed lawn in a Warsaw residential neighborhood, the presumed site area was first subjected to a range of remote sensing techniques, including resistivity, magnetometer, ground penetrating radar, and metal detector surveys, coupled with systematic screened subsoil testing with hand augers. From this data, which included the recovery of numerous War of 1812 artifacts, it was certain that the correct site had been discovered. Over the course of several seasons, this data was used to locate a series of 23 one by one meter test units placed either singly or as short trenches in potentially sensitive areas, particularly along the northern limits of the site. Although there are inherent limitations to such test, ex test excavation strategies, particularly in terms of interpreting soil profiles and recognizing features, testing revealed the presence of a number of subplow zone anomalies, including probable trash pits, shallow cellars, and wall trenches. Although most were difficult to interpret, intact architectural features were clearly present, including limestone footings and at least one fireplace base with evidence for a cat and clay chimney. Most test units produced War of 1812-era artifacts. Not surprisingly, the assemblage is dominated by military buttons. War of 1812 military uniforms were laden with buttons, with a full uniform having 50 or more in various sizes and designs. It should not be surprising to note that 318 specimens have been recovered to date, including U.S. general issue buttons and more specialized forms indicating either branch of service or regiment, as well as civilian types. All firearms in use at the time incorporated flintlock ignition, and many of the 197 recovered round balls were of either 54 caliber or 69 caliber, as used in the U.S. Model 1803 rifle or the 1795 contract musket. Because of the known large-scale militia presence, a wide variety of other caliber projectiles were also recovered, as were smaller caliber balls that would have been used in fouling pieces or military buck and ball loads. Evidence for on-site manufacture of ammunition was provided by finds of lead casting waste and lead sprues, which correspond to the overflow created during the casting of lead balls and shot in handheld molds. Unmodified raw lead bar stock from St. Louis was also present. The other disposable part of a flintlock weapon was the flint itself. Most were commercially produced with black and gray specimens derived from England and tan examples from France. Locally produced examples on white Burlington shirt were also present. Also recovered were the lead wraps that allowed the flints to be firmly held in the steel jaws of, of the flintlock hammer, including one example that still retained its flint. The only formal gun part to be recovered was a decorative cast brass side plate fragment, part of a panoply of arms motif that is most commonly encountered on weapons produced in Europe rather than in the United States or Canada. Domestic artifacts such as ceramics and glass were very limited in number, but several knives, forks, and spoons were recovered. The two tine forks uh, seen there are diagnostic of the period and all have carved bone slab handles. Sub Subsistence-related materials included a wide range of animal and fish bone, as well as some of the tools that were required in their harvest, such as these iron fish hooks and spear point. In summary, although significant in their own right, perhaps the larger significance of excavations at Fort Johnson Cantonment Davis is the increasing recognition that these significant historic sites continue to exist and remain to be discovered, not only in pristine rural settings, but also in environments even more urbanized than Warsaw, Illinois. The constant recognition of that fact can only be to our advantage. Thank you.